Welcome to Saturday Morning Tutorials! I bring no gifts, Goblin King. Nagai, Pakosta na Ashiatafro, Kamosta na Karaste na Sha. I came seeking you. Ari, Kamosta na Dekiro, Kraonta, Kamosta na Kanate, Kana Obomo Kospe Mamparakata. <laughs> I like your cape. Wa umpa kastana ke katon so karas tamafira. I seek the cube of Poseidon. Baoba. Kastil baoba. Shil Kaomta Takirna Kaomta Vasa. My liege, why do you think I came all the way down here? <laughs> my, my, what a gem. Live the Queen. Chris, what the heck are you doing? I'm uh, building a cave. You want to tell me your. Well, <laughs> I don't know if this is going to work. I have this reddish brown paper that I'm crinkling up, and then we're going to build a little rock tunnel right there at the doorway. And I think when everything's hanging up, we're going to find some spray and just kind of lightly spray everything to give it a nice little rock texture. So, we'll see. One more question. What's that? Where'd you get that shirt? Oh! Too oh, dope! It's Ukraine merch, sir! New York tutorial! Get your shirts ah, right now! Ah, get them right now! <laughs> Production crate built a cave with a box of scraps. We did a pretty good job of building the cave out, but the coolest part is these movable objects here. So these are stalagmites, not stalagpites. We can move these two stalagmites around constantly, so we're resetting the scene. We can change it up constantly and make it look like there's like an infinite number of different caverns to go through. We also have these two torches here. They have these really cool fire bulbs that cast, you know, pretty realistic fire light. These are also movable, so we can reset that constantly. So just moving these few elements around, that's essentially how we're gonna build this whole cavernous world. Out. The first thing that might surprise you about the Tesseract effect we did is that nothing is 3D, well, except for the cube itself, which is 3D in the sense that it's a real object. It's 3D in the same way that you and I are. 4D. Actually, yeah, a yeah. Tesseract is a 4D <laughs> shape. What I meant is that all the effects are in made in After Effects with native After Effects. Am I making sense right now? Before we actually started shooting, we did several tests using this cool clear cube and different types of lighting configurations and tracking markers. Killing it on alliteration right now. The onset lighting is a huge part of why this effect looks so dang good. It was lit using dang. some color changing LED bulbs we bought online for something like 10 bucks. Investing in some good lighting like this is gonna help your effects look exponentially better. For a big shoot like this with actors and, and caves, we didn't 
didn't want any experimenting on set. So we're glad that we got all that figured out ahead of time. We wanted to be absolutely sure that the markers were noticeable enough that we could track them, but small enough that we could remove them without much trouble. What we ended up with looks something like this. Oh, cool. Or exactly like this is what we used. There's some low profile tracking markers on the sides and a slightly bigger tracking marker on the top. These are just made with some painter's tape and some geometric-ish markings drawn onto each one for additional contrast. The ones on the sides are smaller because we didn't want the Goblin King's nasty, nasty fingers overlapping them. This would make painting them out a bit more difficult. We did want the fingers to overlap the cube a little bit though, as this would add a little more depth to the shot and make it look less like it's just an effect dropped on top. There's also an additional track point suspended in the middle of the cube with some string, but that didn't really end up working out as well as we had hoped, but it was still good reference. True. The way we had the Goblin King and the Hidden One hold the cube was pretty intentional as well. We tried to keep all the trackable sides visible to the camera at all times. This just made it so the cube looked better overall, but it also made the effect way easier to pull off. In After Effects, we'll apply the Mocha effect to that footage, and we'll use that to send it right on over to Mocha. We're gonna draw an X spline around each of the blue tracking markers. We'll make sure to name the splines top left and right so that we can remember which is which later on. Before we start tracking, let's line up our surfaces. Click the Align to Surface button and use that to draw a square around each of the faces of the cube. We'll check on perspective and let these guys track. Once those are done, we'll make sure to save and then close out of Mocha. Back in After Effects, we'll make three new solids. But back in After Effects, that's how I would have said it. Uh, you want me to try again? Yeah, yeah. But but can you help? You say yeah, 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 yeah. You, you do that first part, and then I'll take over from there. B -b 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 back in After Effects, we'll nice. make three new solids: <laughs> one for the top, one for the right, and one for the left. Make sure to label them. Be smart, smart, great. Using the Mocha effect, we'll apply the track data to these solids. We've gone over this process a few times in the past and the future as well. <laughs> but usually, we use transform data, and this time, we're actually using the corner pins. Oh, ooh, 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 a corner pins! Note. Very nice. We'll leave these alone for now, but we should be very proud of what we accomplished here today. Let's get rid of these tracking markers now. Now? In, in the Mocha effect, under the matte menu, click Create AE Masks. That's going to draw a mask around everything we tracked, which just so happens to be the very things that we want removed. We'll set all of these masks to subtraction masks, and we're going to pull up the Content Aware Fill window. It's the first time we've used it on this channel. We're just going to make sure the fill method is set to Object, and then hit Generate Fill Layer. This effect propagates outwards from where your playhead is, so if you have a specific specific frame you want to look very good, put your playhead there before you hit generate. In some of our examples we had a rack focus, so we wanted to choose a frame where the cube was in focus to be our best frame. If you don't have a favorite frame, just put your playhead in the center and this will give you less noticeable errors overall. So the fill generated isn't exactly blowing our minds. Nice try Phil. Yeah, nice, nice try, try Phil. Phil. It's not very pretty, but that's alright. We're about to cover it the heck up by adding some energy. We're gonna add energy to the center of the cube first. So this is where we would track that center marker that we talked about earlier, but with the rest of the cube in the way and its odd shape, it just doesn't really work. We can still see through the cube though, and that's good enough for us to track it by hand. So let's do that and that's working out just fine. We'll parent a new solid to this and we'll apply some turbulent noise to it. We decided to go with the dynamic fractal type and then we keyframe the evolution to give it a little bit of movement and life. You'll want to adjust all the other settings to match your shot and whatever look you're going for. We added a circular mask to this, but the mask is actually a little bit bigger than the cube. And of course, we feathered the heck out of it. Of course we did, but that's gonna cause the color of your solid to show through on the edges. So you're gonna wanna change the blend mode of the noise to none in order to correct that. True. We also dropped in one of the loopable sorcerer fire clips from a little website called Footage Crate. We dropped that over the top, which gave it a bit more organic motion. These are pretty neat looking effects. It's loopable, so we can use the interpret footage menu to add some loops to it or use the looper script, which is available on Production Crate for free. You can use that instead. And then all we did was tint it black and white and bada bing, bada boom. I'm gonna stop saying that. I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> we can pre-comp all those layers together and, you know, 
you know what? It's just not looking very 3D. The way that we're gonna fix this is with some displacement. Let's make a copy of each of those top left and right solids that we made earlier, and we'll pre-compose those as well, and then we're gonna open that pre-comp right up. Let's apply a gradient ramp effect to each of these and make sure that the ramp is applied before the corner pin effect. We'll go ahead and change up the angle of each gradient just so they all look a little bit different. There's not really much logic going on into this. Under those, we'll add a neutral gray solid. This just means that the saturation is zero and the brightness is 50%. We're gonna put an adjustment layer over top all this as well with a little bit of blur. But 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 back in the main comp, we'll put a displacement map effect on the noise we made earlier and use this new displacement map comp to drive it. We can make some more copies of the top, left, and right solids and pre-comp all those as well to use as an alpha mat. Whoop whoop alpha mat. Alpha mat. Hey, hey, Chris. Yo. Alpha Matt. Alpha Matt. I need, I need some energy out of you. Uh, Alpha Matt. Alpha Matt. Alpha Matt. Alpha Matt. Hey, Nico. Alpha Matt. Alpha Matt. Do you know this joke? This might look a little bit strange to you. It doesn't look like it's mapped onto the outside of the cube at all, but you know, it's not supposed to. This here is the energy that is on the inside of the cube. It is being refracted through the glass. Next, we want to add some energy to the outside of the cube, which is gonna give it some parallax. We're gonna use those super handy corner pin solids for this again. Let's add a similar noise effect to them as we did to the center. These solids look like squares right now because of the corner pin, but they're not. They're actually 16 by 9 rectangles, which is the same size as the comp. They had to be that way for the mocha tracking to work. So that is going to make our noise look a bit stretched. So we're just going to uncheck the uniform scaling and we're going to stretch it in the other direction to compensate. You can copy and paste the same noise effects to all the layers, but I suggest changing the offset turbulence value so they don't look the exact same. We'll also add a circular mask with a lot of feather on it to keep those from going all the way to the edge. We'll set them on a light and transfer mode over top of the inside energy and we're going to pre-compose all of those things together. Now we are making some headway. Let's add some color to it to make it look very pretty. Uh -huh. First thing we did was add a solid composite with a black background just to make sure there's no alpha interfering with the color. We also added a sharpen to some of the shots to make the noise look more detailed. It wasn't appropriate for all the shots, just a couple. Mix it up. We'll add a glow with a low-ish radius and a low intensity. That's just to bump up the highlights a little bit. Over that, we added a curves and bumped up the blue channel a bunch. If you couldn't tell, this is a blue cube. Mm -hmm. We took out a little green and a little more red to get the type of blue we wanted. We also added a slight S curve to get some contrast in there. S for sweet. <laughs> Over that, a second glow is added with a low threshold and a wide radius. Sounds like a wrap. Got a low threshold and a wide radius. Got a low threshold and a wide radius. Low uh, threshold uh, and a wide uh, radius. That's a wrap uh, we... If you're working with some footage that has a rack focus like we were, you'll want to try and match that camera lens blur. This is easier than it sounds. If you just get it sort of close, it's going to look good. Just make sure your keyframes are set to easy ease. Now's a good time to play with blend modes. You might think we'd use a screen or an ad like we normally do, but we actually went with linear dodge this time. Yeah, there's Ooh. more options than just cool, and screen, multiply, add, yeah. <laughs> and uh, overlay sometimes. And dissolve. I never used dissolve. Has no use yeah. in my opinion. We added some additional streaky glows because the test rack just kind of looks like it's got some streaky glows sometimes. Let's duplicate the cube and remove all the effects except the solid composite. We'll add a curves or levels to crush down the blacks so we're just dealing with the highlights and we'll use a fast box blur set to horizontal only to streak them out. Streak them out. Then we add another levels or curves to brighten it back up. Duplicate the original fast box blur to make it stay stricky. Go ahead and tint it blue. We ended up using a color dodge mode for this layer. We rotoscoped out the fingers using Mocha. You can use any roto method that you want. If you don't know how to rotoscope, in the description of this video, you'll find a link to our pro rotoscoping course. Then you'll know. True. On some shots, we wanted some texture on the lens, even though, you know, I would never allow a dirty lens on set, only in post. We grabbed a nasty lens 
lens texture off a graphics crate and masked around part of it, tinted it blue and sent it to a screen. You can use an ad transfer mode as well. We mentioned before about how our cave is lit up with some fiery torch light bulbs. They cast really cool moving light, but they don't actually look like fire. So we added in some torch flame footage over top. We shot the torch footage specifically for this tutorial, but of course you don't have to go to all that trouble. You could find it on footage crate doc. Just go to footage crate, just find it. Right here, footage crate. Right, here, right here. We only have one goblin mask because we frugal. So any shot showing two goblins are actually just composite shots. Nice little trick is to use a foreground object to cover up that scene. This is gonna make things super easy. So easy in fact, us After Effects users did this <laughs> inside of Premiere. Uh, Adrian, why is there blood in the bucket? I'm making some bloody entrails. Yeah. Except they're gonna be hanging from a head. I don't know if they're called entrails if they're in your head. I'm not too familiar with goblin anatomy. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> they're entrails. Their stomach is actually where their brain is supposed to be. It explains a lot of their behavioral issues. For the decapitation scene, we stuffed the goblin head mask full of clothes and stuff to make a severed head. Our first idea was to throw it right at Nico's face, and, and we did. <laughs> it didn't really work though, we ended up just gently dropping it, but at least we all had a good time. <laughs> to make it roll on the floor, we just rolled it on the floor. Sorry if that last part sounds a bit too technical. Yeah, a little, a little crazy. Hey Nico, lol, what are you doing? I'm doing goblin voices. I even have little references right here, and I have the video to dub right here. This is goblin language. Oh yeah, cool. goblin 101. <laughs> Do you have any voice acting tips for the kids at home? Um, sort of performing is a big part of it. It lets you sort of get into the character that you're doing. Warm up your voice, warm up your voice, do your exercises, hydrate, definitely hydrate. And uh, nobody's watching, so. <laughs> <laughs> so let loose. <laughs> All right, everybody, that does it for this episode. We'll be back next week with a new Saturday morning tutorials involving more fire and more caves. A similar cave, probably. Yeah, the same, it was the same cave. Get your merch. Yeah, remember to buy a t-shirt and as always, if you ever want to like hang out socially, we're available. Yeah. So I mean, we're comment. not like just lonely or anything, but we're here, you know. <laughs> Later, creators. <laughs>